Next on Worcester News tonight, an anonymous donor gives a more than $10 million gift to a Worcester school. It's the second largest donation in WPI's history. Plus, more than a century of chocolate making. A look inside one of Central Massachusetts' famous candy shops. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. In an effort to raise attention on gun violence, dozens will gather this weekend for National Gun Violence Awareness Day in Worcester. It's the first time the Central Massachusetts chapter of the state's coalition has hosted an event on this day, and they hope others will work together to reduce gun violence in the state. Our Roslyn Flaherty joins us now to explain. Roslyn. Olivia, people in support of the group say gun violence is happening right here in the community. Just last week, a 16-year-old was shot and killed in the city. Central Massachusetts is joining the state's coalition to prevent gun violence group. Dozens will gather in Worcester on National Gun Violence Prevention Day to raise awareness and honor victims of gun violence. To talk about the various strategies, legislative, local, and uh, to gather support, momentum, uh, ideas uh, to uh, rejuvenate the local effort. Reverend Aaron Payson says supporters of the group are encouraged to wear orange. Last week, a 16-year-old was shot and killed in the city. There are a lot of uh, people that are grieving the loss of that young man who had a bright future. A proposal allowing for the temporary removal of firearms from people considered a danger to themselves or others was approved last month by the Massachusetts House of Representatives. Senator Mike Moore says Saturday's gathering couldn't come at a more perfect time. I think will also help us uh, focus our efforts on this legislation and hopefully remind my colleagues and the public why it's important that we need to pass legislation like this. Reverend Payson says he hopes meetings like this will make a difference and keep the issue at the forefront. So that we are uh, able to unite as a community around the issue of uh, safety and uh, the reality that guns are present in our community. Now the gathering will be tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. at the Unitarian Universalist Church on Main Street. Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Two men are sentenced to prison this week after pleading guilty for their roles in a 2015 fire. According to the Telegram, Lionel Bermudez and Scott Fallon pled guilty to charges of arson of a dwelling, a conspiracy in connection to the fire on Dixfield Road. Prosecutors say the men were recruited by Kevin Crozier to set fire to his home. Crozier lived there with his girlfriend Sabrina Hathaway, who has been missing since 2014. Crozier was sentenced to six years in prison last week. A Shrewsbury man is sent to Bridgewater State Hospital Friday for an extended evaluation to determine if he is mentally competent to stand trial. Andrew Burke has pled not guilty to charges of trying to break into the Worcester Islamic Center last year. According to the Telegram, Burke has a history of mental illness and was sent to Bridgewater State Hospital last year when his case was pending in district court. He is currently under indictment on charges including vandalizing property, assault to intimidate, and assault and battery on a police officer. A multi-million dollar donation to WPI is sure to help students, faculty, and staff in many ways. The school hasn't received the money yet, but it's written into the donor who wants to remain anonymous as will. Our Chandler Walsh has the details. Chandler? Olivia, the university says the donor is active in their community and regularly attends reunions. The donor says WPI has a special place in his heart and it was the best option for his contribution. Worcester Polytechnic Institute announces a $12 million donation from an anonymous alum. It's the university's second largest single donation. As much as we would love to celebrate the donor, we do have to be somewhat low-key about that, but uh, everybody was just thrilled. The donation is a pledge written into the donor's will. It's an unrestricted gift, so the school can choose where the money goes. It really is also a great expression of confidence and trust in an organization, especially for a gift of this magnitude. WPI says the multi-million dollar gift will help transform the school. Phil Ryan graduated in 1965 and has already seen a transformation thanks in part to past donations. He says many alumni give for this reason. They were enabled to have a WPI education because someone came before them. In some cases they were named scholarship and they knew who they were. In many cases they were anonymous donors who built the infrastructure here who funded professors. 
Recent grads say donations like this one made attending WPI possible, and they continue to see growth on campus. Donations um, of any magnitude just make such a huge impact on campus um, due to scholarships, campus beautification. For others, the gift is a push to succeed. It kind of inspires us that somebody from WPI has reached to that point in life where he or she is capable of donating that much amount, so why not for us? WPI will formally announce the commitment at an event tomorrow for Alumni Weekend. They hope the donor is somewhere in the audience. Olivia? All right, thank you, Chandler. Hundreds gather in Worcester Thursday night to remember Adriana Colon. She was killed in a motorcycle accident Tuesday. Motorcycles line the street outside Smokey Joe's Cigar Bar on Park Ave. Friends and family gather to pay tribute to Colon and raise money for her family. The 31-year-old was struck by a vehicle taking a left turn onto the Interstate 290 West Ramp. A motorcycle ride to raise money for Colon's funeral and family is planned for this Saturday in Auburn. A staple in central Massachusetts, Hebert's Candy Mansion has been around for more than a century. The candy shop says while they try to keep things original, they also have to keep up with the times. Our Brittany Schaefer joins us now with more. Brittany? Olivia, some of the decorations inside the mansion have stayed the same, but the company says big changes like packaging and the internet is something they've had to adapt to while in business. It all started out of Frederick Hebert's home in 1917. And now more than a hundred years later, the Candy Mansion has become a staple in central Massachusetts. 101 years, uh, which is pretty amazing in today's world, uh, particularly with small manufacturers. The chocolate makers moved to their permanent location off Route 20 in Shrewsbury back in the 1940s. CEO John DeLiso says the light fixtures and stained glass inside are all original. The character of the place actually is one of the things we try to preserve. A lot of our products were in fact developed in the 40s and the 50s and the 60s and although you know, packaging may have changed a little bit. You know, our tried and true uh, formulas remain the same. The company now ships their sweet treat all across the country. Deliso says a big part of being a successful small business has been adapting to change over the years. Keeping yourself uh, and reinventing yourself and staying current. You know, um, the way we distribute products today is not the way it was done. You know, 100 years ago, um, we didn't have the internet. We, we didn't have, you know, websites. And so we do a lot on our website now. The company says Central Massachusetts has been the perfect home. Today we had a lady whose husband hadn't had the white chocolate in about 40 or 50 years, she said, so she was bringing some home to him uh, back to Florida. So it was nice that she stopped in while she was here visiting family and bringing the tradition back home with her. You hear kids and, and all the screaming and yelling and the excitement. Um, it kind of makes all of our lives, you know, a little brighter. The mansion also just opened their outdoor ice cream window for the season, and it was a popular spot on Friday. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. A Worcester Elementary School is getting a much needed outdoor space. There hasn't been a playground area at Canterbury Elementary School since it was built in 1987. Worcester used city block grant dollars to purchase this property just next to the school. Once the land was purchased, they took down a dilapidated home on the property, which was the scene of a horrific murder back in 2009. The new space will be available for students and community members to utilize. It will include a basketball court and a playground. It's safe, secure. They have the amenities that most of the other kids have in the Worcester Public Schools that they have not had. Kids need to be active. They need to burn off energy before and after school and at recess. And in the summertime, this is going to be a great amenity for the neighborhood. So. These kids deserve it just like kids in any other neighborhood of Worcester and to have a, a space like this. Continuing to promote healthy, active living is going to continue to be really important. <laughs> The Rotary Club of Worcester presented the city with a $25,000 check Thursday in support of building the new playground. The playground is set to be done mid-July. And for those of you who still have a sweet tooth after the Hebert story, today is National Donut Day. And while it's a fun day with a lot of deals, it does have a more serious past. The day originally started as a way to commemorate the woman who served donuts to soldiers during World War I. Dunkin' Donuts, Krispy Kreme, and Walmart are all among the companies offering donut deals today. And get this, more than 10 billion do donuts are made in this country every year. And the average person eats 31 donuts over the course of a year.